Developing tonight, an attorney for the police officer in McKinney, Texas, is speaking out, saying the cop, who has now resigned, was under intense emotional strain on the day he pinned a 14-year-old girl to the ground and flashed his gun at a group of teenagers after a pool party turned violent. The lawyer for Police Corporal Eric Casebolt says he had been called to the scene of two suicides or attempted suicides earlier that morning and lost his control of his emotions in responding to the pool incident. Meantime, some in the left-wing press continue to use this incident to dishonestly push their own agenda. Case in point, Scott Eric Kaufman, a writer at Salon, which is a far-left website that often descends into ugly partisan hackery. Mr. Kaufman, repeating a Media Matters lie, that's the website devoted to killing Fox News, how's that going for you, went up with a piece yesterday suggesting that yours truly on Monday night, quote, spent half the program trying to justify the police in McKinney before allegedly, quote, leaping to Corporal Casebolt's defense by saying that this teen was, quote, no saint either. Here is what actually happened. We did two segments on McKinney. The first involved an eyewitness who defended the officer. The second involved two pundits, Mark Furman and Richard Fowler, both of whom were against the cop. Two segments out of six on our show, and two of the three guests against the cop. I took no position on the matter, other than to acknowledge the brutality of the cop's actions and the decision-making of the young woman that brought her into his focus. That video is hard to watch. The real pushback has been on this one police officer taking down this 14-year-old girl, African-American girl, taking her down and putting a knee in her back uh, in, in what is a shocking piece of videotape. What about the takedown of the 14-year-old girl, Mark? Because that's the most brutal part of this. And you see him, you know, bending well, her I, limbs. I, it's, it's brutal. It was the head of the NAACP came out and said he treated her like chattel. Listen, the, the girl it's was sad. no saint either. He had told her to leave and she continued to linger. And, you That's know, true, when, when the cop Megan, tells you to leave, you look, get out. I'm not defending his actions. Then, Let me make that no, clear. You, Mr. Kaufman forgot to mention that last part or the fact that our liberal guest agreed with yours truly or the fact that we underscored the horrific nature of what this officer did at least five times. Several other left-wing blogs ran with the narrative suggesting that our show supports the brutalization of young women. It's almost pointless to respond to these kinds of smears, and I almost never do it. But this one struck me as an example of how drastically the press, really the blogs, distort innocuous comments to promote their own agendas. It is not just a left-wing thing, to be fair, but too often it is done by the far left with glee and with total impunity. Joining me now with more, Howie Kurtz, host of Fox News' Media Buzz. Howie, this is, I normally don't, this is punching down, right? Salon, it's like they, they describe themselves as a tabloid. I accept that. Um, but over and over, we see this done where they take something, they distort it, it gets repeated by all these left-wing blogs, and then people accept it as fact. Yeah, it gets into the echo chamber. Shocking, brutal. That sure didn't sound like somebody rushing to the officer's defense. And the worst part of it, there are several bad parts, is leaving out the comment you made seconds after you said, well, the girl wasn't a saint because she didn't listen to the officer and depart, in which you said, I'm not defending his actions. That kind of selective quotation is uh, used by writers who don't have any interest in fairness. And so this is a classic case of a liberal writer with an agenda who often rails against Fox, who's taken some shots at you, trying to discredit the interviewer because he didn't like what the guest said, the mm -hmm. guy you talked to, Sean, who was an eyewitness. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. And I, and I pressed Sean on every issue. They, you know, he, he took issue with me, this writer, for, for probing who said racist things to whom. My guest made an assertion that the people climbing over the fence were, were yelling racist things at the, at the residents. And I challenged him, saying what we heard was it was the opposite way around. None of this is acknowledged. My point is there's, there's very little desire on the part of these folks to get to truth. There's only a desire to get to agenda. And yet there seems to be an audience for that, a, a viewership, a readership uh, for these blogs and in some instances, you know, podcasts, what have you. It's what politicians call playing to the base. And the salon has a liberal readership, a much of which does not like Fox. But I went back to the videotape, did, looked at it in slow motion like you do in sports, and you were hardly a lawyer leading the witness. 
uh, you, you asked uh, this guy, Sean, about every allegation that had been made, whether or not uh, Casebolt was a racist, whether he used excessive force, whether or not residents there used racial the taunts against some of those black kids. Now, you can't control what he says. He had a different view. It didn't fit the narrative. Therefore, somehow the you were responsible for... Um, but then, you know, as you say, in the next segment, you made clear your, your distaste and your disgust but, at but seeing that video, rub. which was hard to watch. There's the rub, is that we had the nerve to put somebody on who did defend the officer. That is what some, and I'm not talking about left wing, I'm talking about far left. That is what they cannot stand. And the reason the Fox News Channel was born is because there were so many television channels out there who were telling only one side. And Roger Ailes had a vision, a different kind of vision, where we'd have a news station that would tell both sides, fair and balanced. We had the nerve to put a guy on who defended the cop, and then two guys on, including Mark Furman, who, who always defends the cop, but who we knew was not going to defend the cop here. So two guys who didn't defend him. And that's too much. You can't, you can't, if you do anything in defense of a cop, for example, in this situation, you must be a bigot. You must hate young women. Well, we're all fair game for criticism who appear on television, but the criticism should somehow be based on the facts and not some selective distortion. But there's a broader point here, I think, about media polarization. Now that we live in this age of cell phone videos where we can see what happens in many of these confrontations with police, which is by and large a good thing, um, it also opens up the, the, a situation, cable news is a participant, ideological media are a major participant, where every local incident, I mean, this was a pool party, fortunately nobody was seriously hurt, you know, gets blown up into some national melodrama in which people try to score points. And not to pick on Salam, but there's another headline that says America's war on black girls based on the actions of one hot headed cop. Yeah, the war on black girls. And, and there was there was one I actually went back and, and, and looked. He wrote something about you one time, this guy. This is what he attributes to you. Howie Kurtz. The Duggar scandal reveals why we need more bigoted conservatives in our national media. I, I don't remember that. But he attributes it to something you said on this show, Howie. I don't, I'll have to review the tape. <laughs> I think I've been very fair in my comments about the Duggar family, criticizing the parents, defending the interview. But here's the thing. That was another example where it, whether you were left or right, whether you had sympathy or not for a Christian family, that some thought were hypocrites, that very much influenced the kind of commentary you did, sometimes honest, sometimes not so much. That's exactly right. Great to see you. Thanks for being here. My pleasure.